Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about the biggest mistake that I see that junior engineers or new grads make when joining Meta. Now, in reality, this video is not just for people joining Meta. This can actually also apply to all of the Fang companies because we all have the same approach to how we write code and the same philosophy behind it. Now, what am I talking about here? And let's go through a very common uh, situation that happens when new hires join the company, especially those that are a little bit more junior. So they're gonna get some tasks to implement some feature and they're coding it up, da 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 da, and eventually they're gonna submit a pull request. Now, a lot of the times, what happens in this pull request? Well, as you may know, you, they're gonna submit it and what's gonna happen? Well, there's gonna be a ton of changes, additions, and you know they're gonna delete some code. And in the end, what's gonna happen? Well, this pull request is ultimately gonna be something like a thousand lines, or maybe it's 500 lines or something obscene, right? 750, who cares? The, a large number of lines. Now, great, you did the feature, but this code is, it's not impossible to review. I'm sure you could do it, but it's horrible to review and you're going to be pissing off your reviewers. Now, let's maybe think about the reasons why we do code review in the first place, right? Is to check if the code we wrote uh, is okay. I mean, you know, it, in the most basic sense, okay, is what I wrote fine? Can I ship this? Can I merge it? Um, can I release this code, right? So we really, we check this code. We also want to catch, um, catch bugs from the reviewer. Um, so we want to be, you know, catching any mistakes we made and I guess um, ensure we are using the best practices, right? Uh, did we use some anti-patterns? And also, what else? Just, I guess, learn from the reviewer, right? Now, if you submit a piece of code, which is a thousand lines long, all of this kind of goes out the window. And the reason for this is because there's just too much to review. Now, a thousand lines is a lot of code. And as a reviewer, you have to keep all of that in your head. Maybe your pull request makes sense to you, but to your reviewer who, remember, has zero context on what you're doing, um, is probably not going to have that. So for this reason, it's gonna be very difficult to actually check whether the code you wrote is okay because there's just too much and it's going to be very difficult to re reason about all of it. So you start to lose the benefits of this one because there's certain parts that might just get overlooked uh, and this kind of ties into the second one. The more code there is, the more you have to review, the more you have to keep into your mind. And the problem is that bugs tend to slip through because you just can't catch everything. And the more there is, the more likely it is your things are gonna slip through the cracks. So you're then losing this benefit. Same thing with the third one. The more code there is, just the more overload for the, uh, the reviewer. And therefore things are just gonna slip through. Maybe they don't catch um, some kind of anti-pattern that you've used or some, you know, something that goes against the best practices and they don't comment it because they've already been reviewing your code for half an hour and their brain's fried. So you start to lose this as well. And then obviously if the reviewer doesn't, is annoyed and doesn't want to kind of leave comments because they're just fed up, then they're not going to try to teach you because it's like, oh my God, I can't look at this code anymore. I'm just going to request changes. Like, and then the, the entire review process just gets dragged out. Instead of something that could have been quick, you then have to submit, okay, this is the, the first PR you submit, and then you have to do the changes there, and then the next changes that are requested, and the next one, then another reviewer comes in, and the overall kind of time to ship goes up because you're just sat there trying to review this massive piece of code. Now, okay, from a conceptual level, we can understand why these massive diffs are a bad idea and why they can cause a problem. But how do we actually get around this and solve it? Now, what we do at Meta is we have something that's called a way of working that's called stacked diffs. And at Meta, we actually call PRs uh, diffs. So from here on, I'll just kind of refer to it as a diff. Now, what we do here is let's say that we have some feature, right? So this is gonna be our feature and this is all of the kind of contents of that feature. Now, you know, the, the bad way to do this is to do it all in one, right? So you write all of your code and it's in one um, diff 
And as we mentioned before, it's really hard to review. You're probably not going to get the, the best review possible. And, you know, worst case scenario, you get something like LGTM looks good to me, ship it. And then bam, you, you know, you, you've just caused a bunch of problems for yourself. So the way that we actually do this at Meta is to have the philosophy that actually we want to break up these changes into smaller parts. So for example, maybe this feature can be broken up into three separate diffs or maybe four separate diffs, whatever the number is, you know, arbitrary at this point, uh, which will all implement one kind of piece of the system and added together, they all do the, um, you know, they, they implement the feature. I don't know, maybe you want to add some new, um, some new piece of UI to, um, you know, your, your front end, right? And we can kind of think of this as, okay, the, the first diff here in this kind of example, so let's say the example is to add new table um, to UI, right? It's pretty simple, right? You're working on a full stack application, you wanna add a, a new table with some data. So the first one, uh, the first step here would be maybe something like uh, update, uh, update backend to return table data, right? So that's the first part. So you could do, you know, update the backend, maybe you add a new endpoint, you add a new field if you're using GraphQL, but basically somehow you, you fetch the data from the backend and you now return it. And this can be your first um, diff here, right? And then you can say, okay, the second one um, could be maybe to actually implement the table. So for example, you're going to, I don't know, read uh, data from API um, plus, I don't know, build um, table, right? And then, okay, so you do this and then, I don't know, maybe the next diff could be kind of integrating this into the, so integrate into existing call sites um, or whatever, or you could, you know, you could feasibly do this here, um, but, you know, depending on the, the complexity of the feature, you'll have some other things, or maybe you notice that um, the the file where this table is gonna go actually has some kind of anti-practices or it's not formatted or maybe there's some unused variables. So maybe you do some sort of like unused uh, variable cleanup uh, to keep the code base clean. And then this one, I don't know, there's just some other things that you do as part of kind of the flow of implementing uh, this table. Now, instead of you know doing this all in one where you're kind of bunging all of these changes together, you've broken it up and it's now easier to review, right? Someone without context can look and see, okay, the first diff here is actually kind of updating the backend to return some data. Okay, I can reason about that. I can see how you're querying um, you know, the data store. I can see kind of the, the way you're returning it. And you know, this, this shouldn't be too many kind of lines here, right? It's relatively simple, right? You can kind of break it up there. Then the next piece is, okay, we now have the data. Let's now consume it on the front end and then actually build the table. So then someone can give you a review there. And then this one, okay, this is an easy variable like cleanup. Okay, you probably don't need much review. Like that's an easy review. And then whatever you have kind of up here um, is, you know, also there. So instead of doing it all in one where you put all of these changes together, uh, you've now broken it up into smaller pieces where each one is smaller, therefore easier to review and much faster to review. Uh, and you can get feedback and kind of iterate instead of having to put everything together, because maybe um, if you put it all together, you build your API um, and you're now building this table, but then if actually you built the API wrong, then you basically have to go back to the start and then you might have to redo everything as you go. So this kind of gets you um, moving faster because you don't have to keep changing everything and reevaluating your assumptions. Um, but basically this is the, the, the philosophy we use is just split up kind of flows into multiple diffs such that each one is easier to review. So actually let's kind of go over the benefits of why we do this. So the first one is obviously um, smaller diff equals easier and faster to review. So obviously that one is uh, there. So obviously the second one is it's easier to catch bugs. So the less code that you have to review, the easier it is to catch bugs because they kind of will take up less uh, or take up more 
proportion of the actual uh, code. Whereas if it's a huge file, then that one bug might be in one line. But if it's only a 10 line file, then it's really easy to catch it versus a thousand line file where it's probably going to kind of slip through. So it's easier to catch bugs and enforce um, best practices. And I guess the third major one is also, well, you know, not always will our code actually do what it needs to do, or maybe we might actually cause problems. So if we cause a problem in production, we need to actually revert the diff uh, such that we're not breaking things anymore. And the smaller your changes are, uh, makes it actually easier to revert. And therefore you won't actually have to start completely from scratch. If all of your files and all of your changes are in one pull request and you have to revert maybe just one particular part of that, then you have to revert the entire thing. Whereas if you broke it up, you only have to revert the part um, that which was breaking. So you can actually keep some of those changes which did work and therefore it's just easier to revert and also less changes need to be reverted. And therefore you can actually just get to kind of a working state a little bit faster instead of having to re-implement everything again. So those are kind of the main principles that we tried to follow during coding. And, you know, we have some great tools available to us to actually make this easier because unfortunately the way that GitHub works is that it doesn't really work with this stacked diff model. Um, there is a way to kind of have, if you have, you know, a given branch. Uh, so if these are two branches, you can have, so this is like B1 and this is B2. You can have B2 track the changes from B1 such that it will have all of them included. But the problem is here, if you then have kind of like a chain, sort of how I told you you need to work, is if you have a chain where B3 depends on B2, which depends on B1, the problem in GitHub is actually if you update B1, it will not automatically update PRs B2 and B3. Whereas at Meta, we have a system where if you update something at the lower in the stack, we have an option to basically instantly update all the pull requests after it such that they'll have the changes uh, included on the kind of pull request review tool. Uh, whereas kind of in GitHub, what I noticed when I tried to do this uh, before on my own was that you'd have to manually do this, which is really bad, right? If you have a stack of, you know, 15 diffs, then trying to do this manually is just going to be a huge pain in the ass. Uh, so we have those tooling um, kind of wins to help us. But, you know, if you're just coming into Meta, then understand, please break up your code into smaller diffs and this is going to make your life easier it's going to make the reviewer's life easier and you're going to find that um, you know your pace of actually getting reviews and getting code out is going to be much higher than if you just you know do the very naughty thing which is put, putting up massive thousand line diffs so hopefully that kind of gives you an overview of how we write code at Meta. And again, this is gonna to apply to basically all big tech companies because we all kind of follow the same principle um, and it's, it's quite universal. So please, if you get anything from this video, keep your diff sizes small, implement features iteratively, and you'll, have, you'll notice that your life will be uh, very much easier and whoever is reviewing your code will love you for it. So hopefully you learned something today. Hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember, keep your diff small. If you did, why not subscribe to the channel for more content like this? And I will see you in the next one. Bye.